not going to work, I don't think. Uh, so we're praying from another dimension, understanding how to take our lives in retrospect and how to get to the Holy Spirit and how to move into the next place in God, how to move to the next place in God. And so what the Holy Ghost is, I want you to put this in your notes, the Holy Ghost is the presence, the power, and the consciousness of God. The presence, the power, and the consciousness of God. If you want to understand the presence and the power of God, you're going to have to dip deep into the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to move into the Holy Spirit in another level and understand how to navigate these rams, how to navigate this dimension. Everything about your life is dimensional. Everything, your anointing is dimensional, your Money is dimensional, your relationships are dimensional, your prayer life is dimensional, your faith is dimensional, your anointing is dimensional, your mantle is dimensional. That means you cannot get to the next level in God until you break that ram open and move to the next dimension. Now, the dimension is a higher ram of thoughts, but it's also a spiritual plane that you access authority and you're able to legislate in that dimension to retrieve and to manifest everything that father has for you you cannot just get um, what God has for you by casually saying it or having casual faith. You got the war for that and you have to go in the ram. And so you have to strategically understand. I need to slow down because I hear the power of God and the unknown in God. You have to understand what dimension in God you're in, what season you're in in God. Some of you are in the sowing season. Some of you are in your harvest season. Some of you are in your prayer season. Some of you are in your faith season where God tries your faith, takes you from glory to glory, from faith to faith. So if you, uh, somebody say, okay, if you want to go to the next level, then you have to break the limitations of the level you're on. You have to break the limitations within your own mind and within your own spirit. You cannot get into this next season of God, limiting God and limiting yourself to the place where you're waiting on God to do it. If you're waiting on God to do it, you need to go back and check your salvation or check the level of faith that you've already uh, built the promise of God on. Because you cannot, you cannot receive the promise of God waiting on God. You have to do something in the natural, you have to do something in the earth before heaven reacts. You have to have the faith. The Bible says, the Bible says that when you pray, here's the dimension of understanding. I know it sounds real simple. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. The Bible says, when you pray, believe you receive. Now, most of us got the faith and most of us uh, can pray and got the word, but we really don't believe. We really don't believe. I preached a powerful message for Passover. It was called, When the I Am Says I Will. When the I Am Says I Will. It's a very powerful message. When the I Am Says. So, so what we are wrestling with, we are not wrestling with the ability of God. We're wrestling with, will God do it for me? Will God do it for me? And the answer is, yes, absolutely, he'll do it for you. The problem is, you don't believe he will. So he cannot. Because he says, when you pray, believe. 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 Believe, you receive. He says, when you pray. When you pray in a dimension of believing that you receive, he says, you shall have it. So there's dimensional prayers. When you pray, number one, you got to pray. Number two, you got to believe, you got to believe that you receive when you pray. You believe you receive when you pray. Not, not four days after you pray, not 10 months after you prayed about it. He says, when you pray, the dimension of believing, then he says you have to have the dimension of receiving when you pray. At that moment, that means when I go into prayer, I am going, believing, I'm receiving the petitions of everything 
I've asked for. The promises of God are yes and amen. So you cannot pray in this dimension of manifestation until you believe you receive when you go to pray. If you're going to prayer to believe, you have missed the mark in God. That means you are praying fleshly prayers or body prayers. And so now you're mad at God because you don't feel like that God has come through for you. You don't feel like that your prayers are being answered because you're believing him to do it. But you haven't received yet. You haven't received yet. You haven't received yet. You haven't received yet. And so the problem is we don't receive and we cannot pray in dimensional prayers and understand how to type tap into dimensional prayers because we don't believe we've received. We keep praying. We keep praying and we keep asking God to give us. At that moment, we receive it and then we thank him and we are legislating in the realm of the spirit. So now at the moment, here's the dimensional part. At the moment I believe, I receive. I have it. I have it. I have it. That means if, if somebody, I ask somebody for $500, they give me the $500 or they say, I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm wiring you the $500. Their word is just as good as me receiving. So, so we, somebody says, stop begging. Yes. Say, say we stop begging and we got it. We got it. I have the $500. They said I'm going to cash app you. And guess what? I, I, I go to cash app and I see it. Why? Now, though I don't even see the money, the confirmation has showed up on my screen that the, the money is there. I haven't seen the money yet. I haven't held the money. I, I don't know what it looks like. I, but the word gives me the confidence that the money is being transformed. Third, when I look at Cash App, there's a little notice there that comes up to say you have the 500. I still haven't seen the money yet. But your confidence now changes because you see it on the screen. You have the money. So now, after I have the money, then I have to go through the, the process of downloading it to my account or putting it on a card. Oh, so you still hasn't, haven't seen the money yet. You have not seen the money yet. You are only, the only thing you're doing is doing transactions with numbers. Y'all didn't get that. You're doing transaction with numbers. Make Dalobosa. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You're just doing transactions with numbers. You haven't handled the money yet. You haven't seen a greenback, a big face. You haven't seen anything. All you see is that Cash App says you have the money. You still have it, and you're transacting with numbers. Oh, my God. Do you see that? You're only transacting with numbers. You haven't, you haven't seen the money yet. It's not downloaded to your account. You have to down. And once you download it to your account, you still don't see the money. But you have the confidence. You're not begging for the money. You're saying, thank you. I received it. Thank you. So they text you or call you and say, did you receive it? Yes, I received the money. Thank you very much. And you go about your way to do your business. Why? Because you already received the money. You said, Nesbitt, come on now. I'm telling you, that's how faith works. Faith is transaction in the spirit realm that brings it into the natural realm according to your belief system and according to how you interact in this next season. So dimensional praying is the transaction in the unseen realm until it manifests in the seen, in the seen realm. It is the transaction in the unseen realm until it manifests in the seen realm. I'm transacting with numbers. I'm transacting with words. I'm transacting with the thing that God has told me. And if you're going to pray in another dimension, you will have to receive what the Lord has already said. We're transacting with numbers. My God, somebody going to get that, 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 that feel like you're in a deficit, that feel like you're having money, financial issues. You, oh, oh, oh. You're transacting with numbers. 
This is dimensional praying. So now, now the process is to get it from the unseen realm to the seen realm. So now I ask the Holy Spirit. This is the, the dimensional praying. I believe I receive it. But how do I get it over into this realm? So the confidence is I have it. Now I got to make the transaction. I got to make the transaction. How do I make the transaction? So with the Cash App, you got you got to have you got to have your account number connected or card connected to the Cash App. So you got to have something that connects you to that thing. So now this is where you get into dimensional praying. You go and you ask the Holy Spirit. I believe I receive. What's hindering the manifestation of what I receive? And the Bible says in Romans, we don't know how to pray, so we lean on the Holy Ghost. We that's that level of measuring or taking into account your relationship with the Holy Spirit to say, how do I how do I navigate this to get to the understanding? Y'all know I talk about Daniel. I love Daniel so much because Daniel had the prophecy. He, he was supposed to be, he says, now how do I get this to manifest? How do I get this to manifest? And he had to go on a 21 day fast because there was some contamination in the realm of the spirit that was holding up. See, it is so easy to receive from God, but the problem is it has to go through atmospheres and dimensions. And because of the dimensions are contaminated, we don't know how to pray through those dimensions. He said, from the first day you set your heart to understand, he said, we have come for your words. The first day you pray, he said, we come for your word. That means your answer was on the way. By God. But he had to stay consistent there. Y'all give up too quick. Y'all give in too quick. Y'all get frustrated. You get distracted. And then you become adversarial to God. Because you come out of unity with God and you grieve and vex the Holy Spirit. When you vex the when you when you when you when you vex the Holy Spirit, when you when you grieve the Holy Spirit, it's saying he, it, it is causing him not to be who he wants to be in you. So dimensional prayers is determined by the depth of the relationship you have with Holy Spirit. He's able to teach you how to navigate those realms to say, what is stopping me? So if it's generational, if it's territorial, if it's some marine spirit, if it's any contamination, then the Holy Spirit will put a grieving, put an utterance in your belly where you feel a burden to pray and that thing will break. See, it's only at the moment that you receive, then the Holy Spirit is able to give you the wisdom and the strategy on how to bring that thing into the earth. The Bible says you have to war for the prophecy. You have to war for the word. So praying in this next dimension, you have to understand that God wants the ecclesia of the church to bring forth in a place of legislation and understanding that Psalms 141, Psalms 141 verse 2 said, David said, let my prayer be set before you as an incense, the lifting up my hand as an evening sacrifice. He says, my prayer is going to go up like an incense where it's not begging, but it's legislation, praying in another dimension, understanding that the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to that dimension. How, how, how do you get there? You must, uh, people need to desperately need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to break things in your life. And one of the things that will keep us from moving into the place of the Holy Spirit is uh, being complacent and the spirit of apathy. Some of you really, you, you say you want the blessings of God. <clears throat> you say you want the blessings of God, but it's so casual, you're not desperate for it. You say you want God to do certain things, 
But when have you pushed back your plate? When have you really gone into another realm and dimension and say, okay, God, I'm tired of being right here. I'm not going to move from here where you may have to study that thing for six months to break that thing that, you, that you're stuck on that one thing until that thing come. <clears throat> Are you understanding me? You can't, you can't be complacent where you are. You've got to stop. You got to start doing some amazing things. I was talking to some business, some entrepreneurs today, and uh, they drove about an hour to get some, some strategy from me. And uh, they were like, we were comfortable, and we know God wants to do it. And a business is just dropped in their lap, and they needed somebody to drop kick them and give them a little strategy, walked away, and was amazingly uh, surprised at the strategy that the Lord downloaded to us to give to them and so they're off to do some amazing things some multi-millionaire uh million dollar things because they were they were too comfortable and the dimension the dimension that god wants to take you uh is because you're too comfortable you're too comfortable you become lethargic and you got a spirit of apathy that's sitting on your shoulder to say i don't know if i could do this i don't know faith doesn't care faith doesn't care Faith moves in. He's trying to move you from the next level of faith. You've got to get there. And you'll never pray in the next dimension being comfortable where you are. You'll never pray in the next dimension being having a spirit of apathy or, or lethargicness. But you are going to have to move into that place to say, I'm digging deep and I want everything that God has for me. I want everything God has for me. Do you know that the dimension of unbelief and doubt will cause you to be disherited, disinherited? Inherited. The Bible says because of the children of Israel uh, but, uh, stayed in a dimension of doubt and unbelief. Did you know doubt and unbelief are backed by spirit? But it's a dimension uh, uh, that keeps you from moving into the place that God has for you. Wow. Doubt and unbelief is a dimension. And it keeps you in a place where you're always struggling to believe God. And they were in a dimension of unbelief and doubt because they never was able to change their mentality from Egypt. They still had Egypt in there. Egypt means a narrow place. Egypt is a narrow place. Some of you have gifts and anointings in you that I wish if you really tapped in, I'm telling you, the world would be, uh, the world would change like this when we start tapping into the anointing, the grace and the giftings. Come on, there's wealth that's locked in you. There are businesses that are locked in you. There are dimensional things that are in you. Some of you on here, I've met you. You've given me your vision. You've given me your ministry strategy. And there's things that are in you that you just need to pray in another dimension and come out of that and saying, you know, I need somebody to help me. No, no, you need to dig deep on the inside of you and watch God do some things that will come out of you. Are you hearing me? Look, the woman with the issue of blood, healing was already in her. She said if I, she had to go to another dimension. She had spent her money. She did everything she could in the natural. She had to go into the depths. She had to go into another dimension. She said, if I touch the hem of my garment, if I touch the hem of my garment, if I touch the hem of my of his garment, I'm going to be made whole. What did she do? She came out of a narrow place. She said, what if you're 66 years now and things are against you? Well, flip them. Flip them. You, you can't talk to me about excuses and about age. The Bible says that uh, Abraham and Sarah was old, old age, but they still did ministry. You can flip it. It's in your mind and it's in your spirit. Okay, God, what do I have left? Ask the Holy Spirit, how do I pray? And if it doesn't happen for me, it's going to happen through my children. But I will see the goodness of the Lord before I leave this earth. I believe I receive that. Come on. Age is a number. He said, I'll renew your youth like an eagle. Come on. He says, I'll satisfy you with long life. What if you got another 60 years? Well, people are not living that long. Well, other people haven't lived that long. He said, I'll, you'll live as long as you're satisfied. So is it too late? Never too late in God. Never too late in God. 
Get your spirit man. Go to another go to another dimension in him. Go to another dimension and watch this. Prayer is a lifestyle. Prayer is not something we do. Prayer is a lifestyle. David said, I'll lift my hands. I'll do this. He said, don't take your spirit from me. He understood dimensional prayer. He understood how to navigate. Praying in another dimension, praising in another dimension, worshiping in another dimension. You have to break these portals to say, I'm taking myself, I'm taking the limits off, and I'm going to challenge myself to do something that I've never done before. And I'm not waiting on my church. I'm not waiting on man and woman of God. I'm going to do something so amazing that I'm going to scare myself. Until you live the life where you scare yourself with your faith. Your faith is not pleasing to God. You got to have some crazy, outrageous faith. <laughs> I, I said you got to have some crazy, outrageous faith. That kind of faith pleasing him. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Could it be that your prayer life doesn't please him because it's not back with faith? Your worship doesn't please him because it's not, it's not founded in faith? You've got to take the limits. You've got to take the limits off. What's going what's gonna to hinder you? Apathy, laziness, complacency, pride will hinder you. Pride will hinder you from moving in the next dimension of prayer. Pride will hinder you. Did you hear what I said? I said pride will hinder you. Laziness will hinder you. Laziness will hinder you. See, my daughter is on it. She's in faith. Is a substance. Yeah. You make that exchange. You make that exchange. You make that exchange. Somebody said they want to fly in the airplane. Just get in it. Just do it. He says that's a spirit of fear. It's a spirit of fear. He said, I didn't give it to you. I didn't give it to you. You you gotta you gotta build that. So let let's let's give let me give you these points and I'm gonna go. So you know I gotta give you a few points. What happens when I pray in another dimension? I build a deep reservoir of abiding peace. When I pray in this dimension, I I, I tap into a dimension of peace. A dimension of peace. You know you're in a different dimension when your life is a life of peace. Everything is peaceful. Your relationships, your finances, everything. You become a reservoir. It's a deep reservoir. Then you become the place that God will begin to pull from. Then people will become, people will start coming to you. It's a reservoir. It's a reservoir. Then that peace becomes contagious. Then you build that dimension of peace in your life that when chaotic things come, you still live in abundance of peace because you've already extracted that out of that dimensional praying. The Bible says that when we pray, it brings a level of peace. That dimensional prayer brings the shalom of God and you begin to navigate that in on the inside of you. Come on, when you pray in another dimension, it creates an inner guard against deception. It creates an inner guard against deception that you can't be easily deceived. When you're praying from this dimension, you cannot be deceived. And you know you have hit that target when everything, when everything in your life, when you start picking up uh, demonic encroachments and adversarial uh, enemies against your life and your destiny, the things that will sabotage and manipulate the thing that God wants to give you, then you understand that you create this dimension where deception is dissolved. It's dissolved. You un, number three, you unravel mysteries. You unravel spiritual mysteries. People say, well, how, how do you get what God is telling you? How do, how do you revelate? Because I pray. I pray from another dimension. I get a word and I said, okay, God, well, how do you want me to teach this word? And I begin to pray in tongues for hours and hours and hours just on one word. And then when I open my mouth, the revelation comes out. Sometimes God doesn't give me the revelation because he doesn't want me to mess with it. But when I begin to pray. You take that thing into prayer. Anything that is adversarial to you, where you don't have the mystery, where you don't have the revelation of the mystery, the secret uh, of the thing is still have not been unveiled. You're not getting the strategy. You take that to prayer. You start 
you start uh, you start rep, you start recognizing the word, hiding that word in your heart, asking the Holy Spirit, what is the mandate for you with this word? And you're you're that's the only word. See, we got we start with 15 million things. We got this going, so we got this long prayer list, this vision board. We want God to do 50 million things. No, until until you have hidden that word in your heart. You are solely confident that you received it. And the Holy Spirit, you have prayed that thing through, the Holy Spirit, on that one thing. <sighs> Somebody said, what if you don't have tongues yet? Call that church tomorrow. We're going to pray with you so you can get it and send you some uh, material on what it, what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you're praying that thing through. You're praying that thing through. Let me tell you something. Uh, the Lord told us to build a city. Some of y'all know that. He gave us 52 acres of land, um, 52 acres. And the first part of the city, he, he said, he said, I want you to build houses. I want you to build some houses. I want to build houses, then the church, then some retail, some green space. And we're going to do some other things on the land. So about $50 million project, $50 million project, just, just, just 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 say uh it, it, just numbers transacting with numbers just transacting with numbers transacting with numbers and uh and uh so for two years you know we were trying to do that we sold a significant seed broke that spirit come on because we've been praying we've been fasting but it took a seed to break uh what was over this region it took a seed to break that thing over the what was holding up we believe we received because we've already got we had to let the, the architect design and all of that but it took a seed to break it. it took a seed to break it we sold a significant seed and we broke that thing in the spirit and we got the um we got the word that we the money was transacted so we it could start start the um building of the houses so today i went and they've completed uh doing the the groundwork which is the plumbing the sewage running the sewage the plumbing the water and the next is the electricity, and by the end of the year, they'll be up about eight million dollars worth. Now we're in collaboration with another uh, uh, entity or company, but we were transacting with numbers in the spirit. Do you do you see? We we did everything we knew: fasting, praying, decreeing. We threw oil on the land. We walked on the land. We confessed. We did. But the Holy Ghost said, "So now, so, so our sowing." broke over that last dimension. So so when you've taken it through fasting, through prayer, through decrees, through praise and worship, and sowing, you've completed it. So you see the dimensions? You always have to sow for the next level. Nobody wants to teach that because we think people are asking for money. We're not asking for money. We are breaking some things only a seed will break. The Bible says that the man of God sowed, and in the same year, he received a thousandfold. It's quiet on here. So, yes, the city is being completed. So today, the houses are coming up. We're just transacting with numbers. We believe we receive. And now God is giving us everything. He's given us more to do. That's stretching our faith. You know, the church is going to come up by the uh, end of the year. We're going to break ground on that. But he's already talking about adding on, doing some more things. And we have not even finished everything that he said to do. So now he's talking about, about extending the city. And most people are like, wow, that's amazing. You're doing that? And he's like, okay, and let me take you to another level. You, you've completed that. Let's go somewhere else. Faith to faith, glory to glory. Faith to faith, glory to glory. So now I'm transacting with numbers. God wants to stretch you into this next season. He wants to reveal to you. He wants to heal you, deliver you, and take you to another place where you are transacting kingdom business on the earth. Can you be a game changer for the kingdom? 
Can you transact business in the earth for our Father? All right, I got to get off of here. My God, I've been over here almost an hour. I got to go. Pray this thing through and watch God do phenomenal things for you. If you prayed, if you, if you prayed, people say, I give my tithes and my offer. Have you sown a seed specifically for the thing you're believing for? And some of you say, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I don't have it. You got something in the soul. He asked the woman. The, the prophet asked the woman, what do you have in the house? She said, just a little bit. He said, we can work with that. But you don't have, you haven't received abundance. So I got to break the spirit of lack off of your mentality. He said, go borrow vessels. Here it goes. But don't borrow a few. She could not break through financially because her, her she couldn't go to the next dimension because her mind was locked in, limited by her poverty. He said, don't borrow a few. So he had to break that poverty mentality. Remember, the flow is commensurate. The capacity is commensurate to the flow, and the flow is commensurate to the capacity. So that means if you don't have the capacity, you won't have the flow. So you have to get it all in your mind. All right, I got to get off of here. I'm going to relax. <laughs> Look, let me, let me say this, and I, I'm, this is not for an offering, but if you have never sown into our ministry and this has been a blessing to you, just, just do it. Go to Cash App. They'll put the information up there. You can do it right there. And uh, so uh, let me tell you, uh, May 17th, our book is going to come out, and uh, some of you know it's already out, but we're going to have everything going, and it's going to be amazing, amazing, amazing. Come on, come on, prophesy to yourself. I'm breaking the spirit of limitation. I'm moving into another place in God. I'm moving into dimensional prayers. Come on, say it over your life. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm moving in the power and the authority who God created me to be. I am who he says I am. I'm doing what he says I can do. And we're going to have phenomenal breakthroughs and tremendous harvest in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Uh, supernatural life is living in faith every day. I'll be with uh, pastors um, Dennis and Bernita Westbrook uh, Sunday at 3 in Memphis. Then I'm on for a break. Thank you all. And then my June uh, will pick up and we'll let you know I'm coming to Atlanta in June. I'll be back in Plano in June. Come on. And we're going to do it. Somebody said, what's the cash app? They're going to put it up. I think it's dollar sign at Dr. Sharon Nesbitt. And uh, you can make that happen. I mean, love you to life. Uh, you're going to get the book. Amen. Um, so get ready. Get ready to pray. Go ahead and pray about it. Ask the Holy Ghost where you missed the mark. And remember, you're transacting with numbers.